as we rightly celebrate the men on the moon, let's not forget the women who put them there. We all remember Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Mike Collins, and you'll know Gene Krantz. But I really didn't know about the women engineers behind the Apollo program. All 12 people who walked on the moon were men. But among the 400,000 people who made it possible were numerous women. In an excellent Guardian article by David Smith, titled, Without These Women, Man Would Not Have Walked on the Moon, we meet Jamie Ann Flowers, a 21-year-old woman from Texas. She was responsible for making sure that Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were prepared and in the right frame of mind to make history on the moon. Margaret Hamilton. Margaret grew up in the Midwest and says it was her British father who taught her to ask what if and why not. She started her career at MIT where she saw an ad that NASA was aiming for the moon. Hamilton became the lead programmer on the groundbreaking Apollo guidance computer which we know has the capacity of your mobile phone. She led the team that developed the in-flight software for the command and lunar modules, and even came up with the idea of calling it all software engineering. She was very much a woman in a man's world, and says, I didn't even think about it at the time, but the culture then was different. In a later interview, interestingly, she said, there are many problems in the culture of today that make it worse than yesterday for women. We are seen now more of a threat to some people. We weren't a threat back then. We were just an oddity. Katherine Johnson. Johnson was born in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, in the era of Jim Crow segregation. She demonstrated a rare talent for mathematics at school and was encouraged to go further by her father. Johnson's trajectory analysis was crucial to the pioneering missions of Alan Shepard and John Clan, and later the whole Apollo program. In particular, she synced the course of the lunar lander with the command and service module. She also went to work on the space shuttle program. In a recent interview, she said, my colleagues and I were committed to the work, and we often found different ways to deal with segregation. In the NASA cafeteria, we just ignored the sign for segregated seating, and we started eating lunch at our desks. Francis Poppy Northcutt. Look at the moon and find Crater Poppy, named after this famous female number cruncher at NASA. She went to university in Texas and studied mathematics, saying it'll help her get a man's job. Northcott was soon promoted, becoming the first female engineer to be part of the mission control team at NASA. She said in an interview, I felt a lot of pressure, but I thought, you know, I'm as smart as those male guys. Joanne Morgan. She endured obscene phone calls, lewd comments in the elevator, and having to leave the building where she worked to search for a female bathroom. But in 1969, Joe Morgan was the only woman in the launch firing room for the Apollo 11 liftoff. She was often asked to make people coffee and replied, why ask me? I'm an engineer. She said, I was there and I wasn't going anywhere. I had a real passion for my job, and finally, 99% of them accepted me. Her NASA career spanned 45 years, and she became the first female senior executive at the Kennedy Space Center. She now encourages young women to study engineering, saying, I was just meant to be in the space launch business. I've got rocket fuel in my blood. Well done, NASA women. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you my favorite shot from the Apollo era. And there's a great story behind it. 
It's the separation of stage two and three on its way to the moon. It was shot on 16 millimeter film by a camera that was activated when the separation occurred because stage two was recovered and they got the camera back and you can see the film. Often just a few seconds of it is used in NASA films about the Apollo era, but its whole length is fantastic. A good friend of mine, David Fairhead, the editor and director of many great NASA films, used it in length in this great film called In the Shadow of the Moon. Go and watch it if you get the chance. Sit back, watch this shot, thank all the women who work for NASA, and remember 50 years ago, we walked on the moon. The truth is out there. Yeah.